let's try our hand and write some Lewis structures of simple molecules. So uh, Lewis basically says that um, atoms um, are going to share electrons, so share, uh, I guess, pairs of electrons in order to make a covalent bond. And the other overriding rule is this octet rule. And so the octet rule basically says the atoms like to end up with eight electrons, um, except for hydrogen and helium uh, that like to end up with two electrons. And we call this the duet rule. And if you're wondering, well, why is it like that? So just a reminder, the noble gases, right? Those inert gases all the way at group eight, they have got eight valent ele electrons around them. So almost everything's gonna wanna be like the noble gases. They've got that full outer shell that makes them kind of Teflon coated, so to speak. Uh, but the very first period of the periodic table, you can only actually have two electrons around uh, the first shell. So hydrogen and helium are both full up when you've got two electrons, hence the duet rule. So let's have a quick look at a few simple systems here. So F2, so fluorine is a diatomic molecule, which is to say it's a molecule made of two atoms. So fluorine in nature is always found in a pair. And if we want to understand the bonding of fluorine, we've got to understand why they come together. So we've got a pair of fluorine atoms. Fluorine is uh, element number nine. So it's got uh, two electrons in the inner shell and seven in the outer shell. And uh, this one over here is exactly the same. We can write the dot structure. Remember, we're just writing the valence electrons here. So I'm going to leave the first four by themselves and the next three paired up. And again, just a reminder, right, it doesn't really matter what size you uh, kind of start and finish up on. Uh, but I've uh, left them like that to kind of put the unpaired electrons across from each other. Now, uh, the question is, how do we get them to be stable? Well, the element just past fluorine on the periodic table uh, is neon. And uh, neon has an electron configuration of 2,8, and it's got those eight electrons filled around it so that outer shell is completely full. So we might guess that fluorine wants to be like its uh, brother or its sister neon, and if it can somehow find a way to steal one more electron, then it'll be completely Teflon coated. It'll be completely full on its outer shell, and that's going to make it quite stable. So there's two ways to do that, right? So uh, you might imagine. Uh, we can do that one of two different ways. So let me see if I can make a copy here. So I'm going to go ahead and, uh, oh, yeah, perfect. And I'll tell you what, I'll make another copy too because there's a couple of different ways we're going to do this. All right, so one way we can do this is we can play the stealer approach. So we can go ahead and we can say, let's take that electron and uh, let's have the other flooring atom steal it. And what does that give us? So at the end of the day, what that gives us is this flooring on the left, which I'll draw there we go, in black, uh, has eight electrons around it. So that is a very good thing, right? So now it is uh, isoelectronic with neon. So isoelectronic, uh, iso means the same, electronic means the same electron configuration. And whenever you've got things that are isoelectronic with noble gases, that's a very good sign that they are stable. Uh, so it looks like we've solved the problem, right? So now the other thing, if we look at fluorine, it's lost an electron. So uh, let's see, I'm not pairing them up properly. There we go. So now it is two six. And oh, what else do we have here? Well, the fluorine uh, gained an electron, so it's negative. And the other fluorine lost an electron, so it's positive. So we got an anion and a cation here. Now, the only problem with this is, and you might think, oh, that's good, right? They just attract one another. Pluses and minuses attract each other, so that's why they come together. But the problem is, is that this is completely empty here, and this leaves this fluorine actually hungry for two more electrons, so it would actually want to steal them right back, I suppose. It wouldn't bond at all. So although this is quite stable, this is really uh, terrible, so uh, it sucks. So uh, we can't do this. So I'm going to put a big uh, green cross through this. This is uh, insanity. So it looks like we maybe we can just steal it from the other side, right? Maybe the right hand one can steal the electron, and but that just makes the right hand one happy at the expense of the left hand one, which has an outer shell that's not completely full. So the best way to approach this is through sharing. So uh, just like at Christmas time, right? You always shared your presents with uh, your brothers or sisters, right? Or your cats or dogs. So uh, what's going to happen here is that each electron. Right, or each atom is one electron short. So fluorine would love to gain one more. This fluorine here would love to gain one more. And uh, what can happen is that the fluorines can just kind of nestle up next to each other. So I'll draw them next to each other like so. And uh, let's see, the seven electrons around the left-hand fluorine look something like that. 
and uh, let me do this in blue, the seven electrons around the right hand electron, sorry, the right hand fluorine looks something like this. And what happens is that uh, this fluorine here kind of says, hey, fluorine on the left, you know, I really love you. You know, you can borrow my electron now and again. And the fluorine on the left says, hey, fluorine on the right, you know, I also really love you. You can borrow my electron. And what happens, right, is that uh, essentially each fluorine now kind of borrows from the other one. And it looks like each one has eight electrons around it. So if I draw a little uh, green circle around it, it looks like it's got an electron configuration of 2,8. Or at least it's got an octet around it, right? It's got eight electrons around it. And that makes it pretty happy because that's isoelectronic with neon. And the really cool thing is, right, so uh, let's also do this in green, is that right-hand fluorine gains an electron through sharing with the left-hand fluorine. So it's also got an octet. So octet check and uh, now it looks like it's got eight electrons on the outside which would make it just like neon and so we say that both of them now are isoelectronic with neon so happy faces all around we have built ourselves a very excited fluorine molecule okay we're back so on a new slide so now this is the Lewis structure for fluorine and you might say, well, why is this covalent bond, right? So why is this bond gluing the atoms together? Well, the inside of the atoms um, contain a nucleus that's positive. And so by uh, sharing an electron, now there's an extra electron here. And they're both attracted to the positive nucleus here and the positive nucleus here. So this glue here gets to hang out and gets attracted to both this nucleus and this nucleus, which makes it pretty happy. So uh, that is our covalent bond. So covalent, so co, just like cohabiting is two people uh, living together. Covalent is two valence electrons kind of hanging out between two atoms. So this meets our definition of a covalent bond. So I'm going to put a little arrow there and say this is a covalent bond. Okay, uh, we've got some language here. Uh, we refer to this electron pair here as a bonding pair. So bonding pair or BP for short. And these electrons that I'll go ahead and circle in blue, they are not gluing the atoms together. And so these are our non-bonding pairs. And we can write that as NBP for short, although they're only, honestly mostly called uh, lone pairs, I think because it's a little bit shorter phrase, and that's an LP for short. So we've got six lone pairs here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and we've got one bonding pair that's gluing the atoms together. And most of the time we don't write all these dots out like this, and so if we go to the bottom of the page, what we do is we write a line between the atoms, and that line is a covalent bond, and it represents the sharing of a pair of electrons. So this covalent bond, right, this line here, is the same thing as this up here. We'll just quickly look at another molecule. So if we look at something like CH4, so carbon is in group 4, so it's got four valence electrons. Hydrogen is in group 1, it's got one valence electron. So if I kind of draw the atoms before they bond, it might look something like this. And what happens, right, is that when it forms the bond, we've got shared pairs of electrons between the atoms. So uh, the electron from hydrogen, the electron from carbon, they kind of uh, pair up and they're sandwiched in between the atoms. So now they're attracted to both nuclei and uh, the same thing on the right and on the bottom and uh, on the left hand side. And so this is our methane molecule. This is what it looks like. And remember, we can write those pairs of electrons with a line. And so we can represent this molecule using something like this. So this is our single covalent bond between the atoms. So you can see there, it just kind of clicked up together, right? Just kind of like a jigsaw puzzle. So all those pairs of electrons, they came together. And when they were shared, right, that gave us the covalent bond.